Well, Microsoft has been busy making Windows 10 better, and as a result from your feedback, there's a feature update coming to Windows 10 in May 2020. Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. The latest feature update is version 2004. It's due out in May 2020. Now, some of these updates I'm going to refer you to may have already been on your PC. But if you, if you do have them, not to worry, the update won't change anything except add the latest features that your computer currently doesn't have. In my previous video, I introduced Windows Sandbox, a handy tool to test unknown applications in a Windows 10 environment without the risk of damaging the host operating system. To learn more about the Windows Sandbox, click on the link above or in the video description below. In this feature update, Windows Sandbox will now support configuration files. These files allow the user to configure some aspects of the Sandbox. The configuration files are formatted as an extensible markup language and are associated with Windows Sandbox via the WSB file extension. A configuration file allows a user to control the virtual graphics, networking, shared folders, and the startup script. Other additions include microphone support by configuring the audio input device through the configuration file. The Shift, Alt, and Print Screen key combination will bring up ease of access to enable high contrast mode. And the Control, Alt, Break key combination allows entering and exiting the full screen mode. Now, although the Windows Sandbox has shown to be a worthy application, it is only available to users of Windows 10 Pro and higher. Ease of access is also getting some updates. For instance, the text cursor indicator was added to help the user find the text cursor in the middle of a large amount of text, during a presentation or on the screen in an educational setting. You can simply just choose the size, and you can also pick the color to make it easier for you to see. The Windows magnifier now keeps the text cursor in the center of the screen, making it easier and smoother to type. This ability is on by default and can be changed in the magnifier settings. Magnifier is now compatible with dark themes and text sizing options. When using tables, Narrator will no longer repeat header information when navigating within the same row or column. Entering and exiting tables is also less verbose. Narrator can now provide a web page summary. Now, currently, this command will give information about hyperlinks, landmarks, and headings. Narrator now automatically starts reading web pages when they are loaded. And narrator will start reading at the main landmark, if there is one, or will fall back to a reasonable paragraph. Narrator will automatically read emails more efficiently when they are open in Outlook and the Inbox Mail applications. File Explorer search function was also updated to help integrate your OneDrive content online with the traditional index results. Now, when you type into the search box, you will see a drop-down populated with suggested files at your fingertips. This feature update will also make some new changes to Task Manager. For instance, if you go up here to Details, you'll get a new option for an architecture column. And what this column does is it shows each application or process it's running if it's a 64-bit or if it's a 32-bit. If you click on the Performance tab, you're going to now notice that your hard drive can be identified. It's going to tell you whether it's a solid state drive or if it's going to be a hard drive. Now, this here is a virtual version of Windows 10, and you're not going to be able to see the GPU. But let me show you an example of what's going to take place. On a standard computer, you'll notice that you'll have a Performance tab 
for the GPU. This is the graphics processor. And as you can see, mine is called an NVIDIA GeForce. That's the version that I have. Now, with the new update, they're going to add a temperature uh, that shows the temperature of the card. Now, this will only work with a dedicated GPU card. Now, the only pr other thing is, is it's going to show the temperature of the card in degrees Celsius. Delivery optimization was updated to help users with the low connection speeds. The old setting had download throttling as a percentage of available bandwidth that many users said was not providing enough relief in reducing the impact on their network. This update adds the absolute value settings to set precise limits on the bandwidth. Notification and action settings was updated to provide more control with the app notifications. Now when you receive a notification pop-up, you'll see a new inline setting option to where you can either go to the notification settings for the app or you can turn off all notifications to the, to the app itself. If you go to the settings for the app, you're going to see some new changes. Uh, here you can see that they've added pictures to help articulate the impact of certain settings and you can also now be able to mute the application's notification sound within the app settings. The next update uh, you're going to see is for instance let's say you need to add a quick event or reminder. Well normally you would have to go in the calendar to be able to do that. Well with this update all you need to do now is click on the date and time in the lower right on the taskbar and then select the date that you want to create the event for. Now you could just create a name for the event. It's going to pick a color for the event. And then it's good, you could set the time. And you can also add the location. And then all you need to do is click Save. This feature update also includes an update to Cortana. Now Cortana has a new chat based user interface to give you the ability to type or speak natural language queries. It has also been updated with a new speech and language models and it has been significantly improved in performance, making it faster and more reliable than before. Now Cortana also has a new less intrusive screen for the Hey Cortana queries so you can stay in the flow while you work. Another thing that they've changed is you can also move the window to wherever you need to on the screen. You can also do a change in the size of Cortana as well. Now the next update that they did is a pretty minor update. Uh, this one here involves calculator. And I'm sure a lot of you probably use the program which does come in handy when you need it. Uh, this update is pretty minor and what it does is they have an option now to where you can always keep calculator on top of all other windows uh, for instance uh, like i have cortana here if i were to move it the calculator will always stay on top on any other window that you put it to this comes in handy if you're doing calculations and stuff and you always need a calculator instead of having to switch back and forth this is a new plus now, there is an update that they're doing um, with Calculator, but it won't be in this one. And I will show you some of the future um, updates that they're working on in an, another video. The next update is going to involve the network status page. And what this is, is they made some changes to it. Uh, now, it's going to show the current connection that you have. Uh, it's going to show the amount of data that's been used within the past 30 days. And you'll be able to show what's connected. You can view it. You can change the properties as needed. Now, if it shows multiple connections, it is only going to use one connection at a time. It won't use both connections. Another thing you're going to see is data usage. Now, although this right here shows you the total amount of data that's been used uh, in the last 30 days, what they've also added is if you click on the data usage, you're going to see a breakdown of all the applications and the amount of data that those applications had used. 
this comes in handy so if you need to see which applications are using the most amount of data then you can also set some limits on how much data can be used and then you can do monthly if you need to do a one time or if it's going to be set to unlimited and then just uh, show the date that it's going to your monthly plan resets uh, the data limit that you have every month and then choose save if you use Windows search you're going to notice some changes from this latest update uh, up here at the top you're going to see the most recent and top applications that you use uh, you're going to see your most recent activities and down here in the bottom you're going to notice a new section it's going to say quick searches uh, you can do your weather your top news your today in history even new movies now another thing that they did change is the spell correction technology uh, they did make some changes to where it can recognize minor typos so if you type in something and you kind of misspelled it which is going to happen uh, you know we type fast for a lot of people and mistakes are going to creep in but the spell checker on this will be able to intelligently understand what you're typing with small typos and as you can see here I deliberately misspelled Microsoft but yet it automatically knows what that I'm looking for something to do with Microsoft so it gives me suggestions so they did make in some improvements for this and you get better results faster next we have the account picture now when you create the account picture on here uh, it was updated to where it could show up more quickly across your windows your applications and even microsoft sites now most of these sites usually update every 24 hours but this will change in the upcoming months to show changes as soon as they are made the mouse cursor settings has also been changed and updated uh, before you had to go into the uh, legacy control panel in order to control the speed and the buttons and all that for your mouse well the new change in this update adds the cursor speed into windows settings so now you'll be able to change the speed of your mouse settings and you'll no longer have to go to the control panel to adjust the speed now if you were to go into the window settings uh, go under apps and it will bring you to the apps and features and what you want to do if if you go to optional feature here uh, you're going to see some changes that they made here uh, for one you're going to be able to search for any option that you have installed uh, you can also sort it by name the install size or the date that it was installed uh, you're also going to notice that it's going to have information about the size of it the date that it was installed and gives you information about what this feature does now if you need to say add a feature uh, you'll see a pop-up dialog now to where at the top you can search for a specific feature that you're looking for um, you can also sort these by name and download size now one of the things that they did change is they also made a change to where you can select multiple feature updates at a time you no longer have to go one by one you can simply just select the one, multiple ones that you want to install and then you're going to see down here install it's going to show the number of installs it's going to do just click install and it will begin the process now it will show any other dates and the navigation was better updated because what happens here now is it's easier to show the latest installs your uninstalls your cancels right on the main page and you'll see the last actions or the latest actions here and this is everything that it's been doing so as you can see everything has been working better uh, you can work with uh, uninstalling and stuff like that now once it's finished you can also see a history and everything is right here on the main page there's no way there's no having to go to another page and then another page everything will be right here on this main page virtual desktops helps you separate different tasks on your PC and they can be very handy uh, if you're using one for demonstrations or presentations you know things like that 
and you can have it set up on different desktops. Well, this new one update that they're doing, you can now rename your each virtual desktop that you have set up. For instance, I'm going to change this one to demo. So now anytime I go into task view, I can pick and know exactly which desktop I need. There has also been a new feature that has been added to Windows. And what this will do is it gives you more control with new applications restart setting. And if you go to your sign in options under accounts, scroll down towards the bottom and you'll see this new feature here. Um, and what this will do is you can, when you turn it on, it will allow you to restart the applications that are open when you're signing out, uh, you're restarting the computer, or if you're shutting down Windows. The next time it restarts, this will automatically restart the applications that were on. If you use Bluetooth devices, you're going to see a new update in the Windows 10's feature update. And what this does is it's more of a streamline uh, to pairing your devices. They're making it much easier to do. Uh, pairing is all done in notifications now. Uh, there's no need to do set to go to settings uh, for faster pairing time. Uh, they have improved the user interface to show one less notification. Uh, they've also added a dismiss button to the first notification to give you more control while using Swift Pair. Now, to make the notification more helpful, it is now going to start showing the device name and a category when possible. With network security cameras becoming more prevalent, Windows will now be able to connect to these network security cameras by adding them to devices in Bluetooth and other devices and settings. Now, once you're connected, you can capture video photos, stream, record video using your preferred camera app, or you can use the built-in Windows camera app. If you have ever put Windows into safe mode, you've probably noticed that it does not accept the Windows Hello Pin, which was always handy when you sign into Windows. But due to the, the method and the operations of safe mode, then it would not accept the PIN number. And that caused a lot of problem for you folks because you couldn't get into safe mode when you needed to because you couldn't remember what the Microsoft account password was. Well, no more issues. The future update will now let you sign into Windows while you're in safe mode using your PIN number instead of having to use the password. DirectX 12 uh, is going to also have some new features added um, during this feature update, you're going to also get the DirectX Ray Tracing Tier 1.1. Uh, you're going to get a mesh shader, and you're also going to get sampler feedback added into the DirectX 12. And finally, we have the Search Indexer. Now, it's going to receive an update, and what this is going to do is going to better detect peak usage to either stop or cut back to service during these times. Uh, this way, uh, a lot of you have complained because the previous version was using too much resources, too much CPU, too much disk usage, and it was causing your computer to slow down. So this update here, when you receive the feature update, will be, better, be able to better detect the peak usage, and it will either stop the service or it will cut back the service during those times. And as you can see here, you can switch and choose how it's going to perform. Well, this concludes this video. Uh, this is the feature update that's due out for May 2020. Uh, this is going to be version 2004. So keep an eye out for that one so you can get the latest updates for Windows. Uh, there are some other features I'm going to be talking about in another video. So as they come out, um, I will be sure to bring them up here so I can show you all the new features that they're going to be adding or changing to Windows 10. Well, I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.